Greetings, my name is Kerry and this is Kerry Louise Reads. Today we are thinking about what I might read in March. I'm trying to get back into doing monthly TBRs. I've done them the last couple of months. It's been going quite well. It's been helping me focus my reading on getting through my backlist, which has been really good. <laughs> so we're going to keep going with it. I'm sticking this month to the same as what I did last month, which is picking a book or a couple of books for each of my challenges as a way to focus my reading. I'm still having to do quite a bit of <laughs> mood reading. And I'm aware as I'm saying this as well, actually, that you still haven't seen the TBR lists that I've created because February was a bit of a challenging month health-wise in terms of just having the energy and the brain power to do editing when I'm feeling fatigued or particularly if I'm screen tired if I've been doing a lot of work with screens then staring at a screen in the evening <laughs> my primary editing time doesn't always go very well so they are coming. I filmed them right back at the start of January. The TBR lists for five out of my six challenges. The one for review books I haven't done yet. A few people have asked to see that. I think I've, I've got just over 70 books on my NetGalley shelf. So I know that's not as extreme as some people's NetGalley shelves. But considering I've only been on NetGalley since the end of 2020, I mean, that's some going. So I will be filming that at some point maybe in a month or so once I've got through <laughs> some of my editing backlog. Anyway, all of this rambling is to say <laughs> that I'm bringing you my March TBR. It's based again around the challenges. My main goal this year is to get my overall TBR down, my physical TBR, my digital TBR, and I have six challenge lists to help me try and focus that reading. So we've got oldest books in my TBR, series I want to finish, books that were given to me, books from subscription boxes, read around the world, and review books. Once again for March I've picked, actually I have picked two books from each category. I don't think necessarily I will finish all of these books, but because of the way I read multiple things at once, so for example I always have at least one fiction and at least one non-fiction on the go, at a time and usually an anthology as well and stuff I'm reading for uni. So my currently reading shelf on Storygraph I think has 12 things on it at the moment, all of which I'm mostly actively reading. Some of the uni ones I'm going very slowly with at the moment. So anyway, that means that for some of these the books are of different types and that's why I put two on. It's not because I'm being over ambitious with my TBR, it's just these are the things I'm intending to pick up next for that type of book, if that makes sense. I don't know if that does, but anyway, we're going with it. So without any further rambling, let's just get on to the list. So for the oldest books on my TBR, I'm gonna go back to one that was on my January TBR that I didn't quite get to, and that's Pearls, Girls and Monty Bodkin and Bachelors Anonymous by P.G. Woodhouse. I've talked about it a couple of times. It's P.G. Woodhouse, comic writer from the middle of the 20th century and this is two of his stories that have been put together in one volume. I've really enjoyed what I've read of his before, it should be a really quick read. I did almost pick it up in February but actually opted for a different book that had been on my January TBR that I hadn't got to instead but I think I should be able to get to this and get through this. The second book is one that I mentioned in my February TBR, I wasn't sure if I was going to start it in February and I haven't yet. There is still some time in February so I'm either going to start it end of February or at some point in March and that is Anna Karenina and I talked about this so actually I had it as an ebook. It's one of the digital oldest books on my TBR but then my dad gave me a physical copy, he reread it and decided not to keep it. Gave it to me. I mentioned with this one in February I'm planning to just start chipping away at it because it's a bit intimidating. <laughs> I've never read any Tolstoy so I just want to like start. I think the chapters are quite short. Yeah they are so I'm just I think I'm just going to try and read a couple of chapters a day just to start building some momentum with it. It's what I did with Count of Monte Cristo last summer and that worked quite well to get me to a point where actually it was the only thing I wanted to read and I wanted to focus on it. I'm going to be picking that up, hopefully. I'm going to be starting that as my secondary book from my oldest books of my TBR list and also for my read around the world because Tolstoy was Russian and I haven't read a book for Russia yet. Okay, for 
books that were given to me. The one that I really want to try and get to is Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. This is one of those books where it was on my wish list, it was bought for me in a secret Santa, and every time I think about the fact that I haven't got around to reading it yet, I get cross with myself. Yeah, I really just need to get on and read it. I think it's about the experience of black people in Britain, but it's a novel. I've heard so many good things. Obviously it won the Booker Prize. I just want to try and get to it and read it. Hopefully, 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 I'm going to try and prioritise this one. On a similar note, actually, the next non-fiction book I want to pick up is also from my gift list. And I've just realised it all read as a really good parallel with that. So this is Natives by Akala. This was bought for me a couple of years ago for my birthday by my friend Amber from Books of Amber. And this is non-fiction about empire and the legacy of the British Empire. Akala is a musician, hip-hop artist, spoken word artist I think as well. Actually thinking about it that would be a really good parallel read with Girl, Woman, and Other so maybe I'll start them both at the same time. We'll see. But this would be my next non-fiction to pick up. I'm a couple of chapters into a non-fiction review book. Once I finish that I want to pick this one up next. Okay for my books from my subscription boxes the one I want to pick up is Illyrian Spring by Anne Bridge because it's set in spring <laughs> and so I feel like I need to read it in spring. Who knows why? Why my brain works this way? This was in the Ninja Book Box travel box a couple of years ago and it's about a woman travelling across Europe. It's meant to be quite funny and quite poignant. I've heard really good things about it from several sources and the fact that it was picked for a Ninja Book Box means it's really highly rated by them. They only put books they really love in their boxes. In their main boxes that is. The advent boxes are slightly different, we'll get to that in a moment. Yeah, really want to pick this one up while it's spring. So hopefully we'll be starting, at least starting this in March or maybe it might slip into April depending on how the rest of this list goes, but we will see. And then my other one for subscription box is Dart by Alice Oswald. This is a poetry collection. I often have, say, an, some sort of anthology on the go at any given point. So I'm currently reading a short story collection. When I finish that, I may pick this one up. I have an anthology for review that I haven't picked up yet. So I may pick this one up first or I may pick that one up first. I'm not sure yet. But my intention is to start this one in March. This was from a Ninja Book Box advent box. So the advent boxes are all pre-loved books and they're personally selected for the box recipients. So each year we get asked kind of roughly what genres we're into but because I'm like I've been having ninja book boxes almost from the start Bex the owner of the company knows my taste fairly well by now I'm really looking forward to reading this poetry collection based around the river dart as far as I'm aware so it's quite short and if I read like a couple a day it won't take too long to get for read around the world I have another one rolling over from my February TBR this one was the one that I wasn't sure I would get to anyway and at this point I've there's a few days left of February. I may finish a couple more things from my February TBR, but this one I probably won't. So this is The Never Tilting World by Rin Chipeko, but I'll be trying to prioritise this in March. I realised I have got quite a few chunky books <laughs> going on this list, but never mind. Will be trying to prioritise this. I keep picking it on TBRs and not getting to it, so I'm really gonna try. <laughs> Really, really gonna try. The author in Chipeco is from the Philippines. That's another country that I haven't read a book for yet. So hopefully we'll be picking this one up. This is speculative fiction about a planet where one side is in perpetual darkness, the other side's in perpetual light. Really interested to see what this is like. Yeah, hopefully getting to that one. And as I already mentioned, if I start Anna Karenina, that one will count for Russia. Then for series, I debated a really long time. I want to try and finish a series in March because I haven't finished one in February yet. There is a chance I might still get to my February series pick, which was the Toll. I'm hoping to start it at least. So when I was looking at my list of series I want to finish, actually One Jumped Out is the one that I'm most keen to get to because I read the second book in January. I just really want to know what happens next. So that's As Good As Dead by Holly Jackson. This is the third book in the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. My friend Penny is lending me these books. I was with her when she <laughs> was reading this one. I think it was in the summer 
last year and she got about halfway through and put the book down and didn't know if she was going to finish it because she was so cross. So I'm really intrigued to see why. And actually the place the second book finished off like leads in really well I think from what I understand to this one so really keen to pick this one up it's a slightly chunky one but the first two books have both been really fast paced so I don't think it's going to take me very long to get through yeah hopefully we'll get to that one and finish off that series and then I also want to make progress with some of the other series on my list because some of them I have multiple books still to read to finish them there's a series on that list that I'm currently borrowing them from the library and my intention is to keep borrowing them from the library rather than buying them so if I can I want to start The Dragon Republic by R.F. Kwan. This is probably lower priority than pretty much anything else on this list but if I can start it by the end of the month I'll be happy. It's a really chunky one and the first book I remember being quite hard going. I really enjoyed it but it was a rough read in a few places so yeah I'm nervous but also excited to make progress with this series. Once I've read this one I can then request the third one from the library. Okay for review I looked at my NetGalley shelf and <laughs> I don't have actually that many arcs for books that are coming out this year because I haven't been requesting much. Most of the arcs I do have come out in March so I'm not going to get to them before they come out at this point but I did have one book that comes out at the end of April so I thought let's put that on the list on my TBR list for March and then hopefully can get the review up in time for the book's release. So that is called The Daughters of Madurai and the author is Registry Varaya. I can't remember what this is about at all. Ah, it's a family story told over two timelines, which I love the sound of, about a young mother, a young woman in India who has her daughters taken away from her because daughters aren't valued. So essentially her newborn daughters are killed and she is mourning them. And then 30 years later, it follows a younger generation. I remember now why I requested it because it sounds captivating. It's got a really beautiful cover. I'll put the cover up for you to see that. And that comes out 27th of April. So I want to try and read it and review it before it comes out. So that's my primary choice for my review book for March and I'm actually gonna change what my second one was. So I mentioned that I have an anthology for review and I'm not sure whether I'm gonna pick that up or the poetry collection dart. The anthology is called Refugee Wales and it, it's Syrian refugees who've made a new life in Wales and them telling their stories to researchers from Cardiff University and the National Museum of Wales, which sounds really beautiful. That's going to be my second choice for a review book and we'll pick that up as an anthology either before or after Dart, depending on what I'm in the mood for when I finish my current anthology. So that's my main TBR. That's, I think, 11 books. I don't think I'll finish all of them. I'd like to at least start most of them. We'll see how we get on with that. And then because of how many review books myself and some of my friends have outstanding, we've decided to do an ebook eradicator weekend -er in March. So if you've been following my channel for a while, you'll know that a couple of years ago I did a readathon in the summer called the ebook eradicator, which was focused on reading ebooks. It's something that I've been getting into a lot more, especially since I upgraded my iPad a couple of years ago and since I joined NetGalley because the arcs are all ebooks. So we're gonna have that the weekend of the 10th to the 12th of March, the 10th is the Friday, I'll probably start it. It's going to be really low-key, as you know how I am with readathons, there are no prompts, just the aim of spending the weekend reading ebooks. So yeah, going to go from the Friday evening of the 10th through to the Sunday evening on the 12th, and the focus is just to try and read through some ebooks. I have a few kind of on my agenda to get to those two review books that I just mentioned will probably be my main focus of my reading. I also have some books on the Borrowbox app from my library that I want to try and get to. So those are Raven Black by Anne Cleves, Watermelon by Marion Keys and Watching You by Lisa Jewell. So two of those I have out at the moment and the other one should be getting in like the first week of March when whoever's currently reading it red hands it. My intention is if I haven't already read them because I might have got through at least one of them 
before that weekend but I'll be working on those ones as well. I also have a short story collection. I finally worked through the edition I had of it was called Sherlock Holmes The Complete Collection. It was one of the oldest books, one of the oldest ebooks on my oldest books TBR. I got to the end and discovered that it wasn't actually the complete collection. It didn't have the final short story collection, the casebook of Sherlock Holmes. So even though I didn't love the complete collection or almost complete collection of Sherlock Holmes books that I had, I'm a completionist. I think there's only 12 more short stories in this casebook of Sherlock Holmes. So I want to be able to say I've read them all. It will also mean that I have in storage hard copies of the complete novels and the complete short stories and I'm not intending to keep them because I will have the ebook editions if I want to go back and read them ever, which I don't think I will. So I feel like I need to <laughs> read that collection. So that's on the list as well. And then sometimes happens with me, as I mentioned, my difficulty with screens when I'm tired, just in case. I'm struggling to read ebooks that weekend, <laughs> even though it's the ebook eradicator. Three of the books I have from NetGalley for review that have already come out, I've managed to pick up physical copies, borrowing from the library or from a friend's. The idea behind the weekend is to read ebooks, but if I'm struggling to read ebooks, then I might slightly cheat and read these three books in physical format but they are from my ebook tbr so it kind of counts so we've got thread needle by carrie thomas this was actually the first book i was approved for on netgalley and i haven't got to it yet so it would be good to read this one this edition my friend Penny again has lent to me so it'd be good to read that then I can get it off my ebook TBR and give that back to her and then I have two that I've got out from the library so we've got Peach Blossom Spring by Melissa Fu I can't remember what this is about I think it's a, like a family story historical fiction oh 1938 China yeah it's family story covering generations about the experience of people from China during the Second World War and afterwards and exploring like family and heritage and all that sort of thing. So it sounds really beautiful, really lovely cover. That is another one that I might pick up. And then finally, we have Yinka, Where Is Your Husband by Lizzie Damalola Blackburn. This is about a young woman's experience of dating. It's a contemporary, I think it's romance elements rather than directly being a romance story. It's meant to be quite funny. It sounds like, just from the description, it's about a British Nigerian woman living in London and she's single and her whole family is invested in trying to find her husband for her. Sounds like it could be a really fun read, so there's that one too. Okay, so that's a lot of books. This has taken much longer than I was expecting as well. Never mind, that's the books that I'm thinking about getting to reading in March. Quite a lot to choose from. Don't think I'll finish all of them as I've already said but it gives me scope for mood reading and that's what I want from my TBRs at the moment. I don't want fixed lists of I must read these things. I want to have enough scope in there to have options and read what I'm in the mood for. Let me know some of what you're planning to read in March. Let me know if you want to join us for the ebook eradicator. I think we're going to do some reading sprints for that as well so keep an eye on my Twitter probably for that although I'm not using Twitter loads at the moment but yeah keep an eye on my Twitter for that or if you just want to let me know that you've been here. Two of the books I mentioned have spring in the title so leave me kind of like a spring flowery kind of blossomy blooming emoji if that makes sense. Something that you would associate with springtime because we're gradually heading into springtime in the UK here which is nice so leave me a springtime emoji in the chat if you just want to let me know you've been here. You can also like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't already and you can also follow me on social media. All that information is listed for you in the description box below but that's it for today so thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you again soon. Bye! Mm -hmm.